1999, Siphon Filter released at the height of the third person action shooter wave created by Metal Gear Solid the previous year on the PlayStation 1, specifically the third person espionage aka stealth genre. And it's remembered fondly among PlayStation 1 owners. I remember playing the first level over and over because I didn't own a memory card at the time. What's not to like, plenty? There's tons of levels that make the game feel like a Mission Impossible movie. You start in the streets of Washington DC at nighttime with nice open streets to roam around in. The buildings all look the same, but you'll be going into pool halls and underground tunnels to spice up the scenery. After that, you'll eventually make your way into a science museum where the scenery gets cleaned up and more sophisticated. All things museum are represented well in this stage, which is impressive for a PS1 game. I wasn't expecting to see a dinosaur just chilling here. Outside environments are plentiful. You get a stage set in a park with fog so thick, you'll think you're playing a Silent Hill game. Snow and fire are two things you should definitely get used to seeing in this game. You can tell they were super proud of their fire animation. Do you blame them? Look at that majestic flame. I have a soft spot for snow levels, and those are well represented in Siphon Filter. A sight for sore eyes would be the cathedral stage. Another stage I didn't expect to see. It starts on a church rooftop that you need to scale and break into. Inside are the inner workings of an evil biological lab testing facility. But how do these stages play? Your main character, Gabe Logan, moves around with the D-pad, very similar to tank controls. Movement is extremely slow, it even was at the time the game came out, but it's super slow according to today's standards. The button layout in no way helps the situation. You see, while lumbering around as Logan, you can auto-aim onto enemies within a certain distance and can even shoot them on the run. But this isn't gonna fly in later levels. Enemies will almost all be wearing flak jackets, making them impossible to take down on the run. You'll need to stop, set your view, and then hit L1 of all buttons to zoom in with your gun. Then, with the D-pad, snake your crosshair onto the head of an enemy for a headshot over and over and over and over you can strafe side to side with l2 and r2 which is fine i guess it does the job you won't just be shooting enemies there's some light platforming to do in a very tomb raider like fashion nothing wrong here it's actually impressive again for a ps1 game I really like and respect that there's no magic detective mode that tells you where to go next. You're gonna have to look everywhere for switches and obstacles to reach. The game leaves it up to you. Oh, and how can I forget stealth sections? You see, the game has it all. There will be missions to complete in stealth mode. Avoid being seen or heard by enemies and complete objectives. Before moving on, a minor nitpick I have is that enemies see you before you see them. So they almost always have the jump on you, resulting in damage to your character in an unfair way. So Siphon Filter provides level variety and combat and platforming, but there is a price to pay. The look of the game is very low resolution. Logan's close-ups are laughable even for PS1 standards. Environments have that classic PS1 shaky style to it, which is more of a fault of the hardware and not the game developers. Still, the game shows heart and fires on all cylinders. It even makes an effort to provide cool moments, like dropping through glass into a cutscene. Mm. 
Cutscenes are sprinkled throughout the game with voice acting to flesh it all out. The story centers around Gabe Logan who is investigating biological warfare by terrorist Romer. Romer threatens to unleash a biological virus across the country. Gabe sets out to deactivate the bombs and neutralize any threat of the virus. There's quite an obvious double cross type of ending to the story, but Logan completes his mission and all is well in the world until the sequel. Siphon Filter sold very well, making it an affordable and easy to find game today. Like I said, the game was impressive at the time, and it swings for the fences. Unfortunately, the slow, unresponsive, and unintuitive controls make Siphon Filter a frustrating chore to get through today. This one's better left in our memories. That'll do it for today's review, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, I have tons more weekly reviews in the works. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.